Hello everybody. Today we are going to add identity to our ASP.NET Core Web MVC application. We will use the built-in individual user account feature for this application. We will see how to create a registry page, a login page. We will sign up users and log in with our signed up users. Please watch till the very end. Let's get started. Now let's go to Visual Studio and start a new project. We're going to use the MVC model. Let's call this ASP.NET Core 6 Identity. And then on the next page, we're going to choose the framework to .NET 6.0. And we're going to set the authentication type to individual accounts. Let's create a project. Visual Studio, here it is. So here we have a very basic implementation for our MVC project. Let's quickly run it and see how it looks. Let's go to debug, start without debugging. And voila, here we have a very sample, very simple um, web page. Let's go to the login page. And we have our email, password, and login button. And here's our registration page. Now, let's wire up our database so that we can start using this application to sign up users. So for that, let's quickly check the app settings. Under app settings, we already see we have a connection string added by our app by our project. We have a default connection set to local db slash mssql local db and we have a database name given here. Let's change this name to ASP.NET Core 6 Identity. Awesome. Now, let's take a quick look in our project structure. Here we have an areas folder which has identity slash pages and we have a partial layout here. We have our home controller, which is added by default. Under data, we have our migrations followed by our DB context. So our project automatically added the DB context to use our identity. And under migrations, if you take a look, our project has configured these tables, ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET users, ASP.NET role claims, ASP user claims and logins. So these tables will be automatically created for us to use our identity. Now, for these tables to be created, we have to run this migration in our package manager. Now let's go to package manager console. Let's go and say update database. Here we have all the scripts running. Awesome. Now let's go to our SQL Studio. And then here under the server, we have database open. Let's refresh. And here we have our .NET Core 6 identity database created. Let's go to tables. And here we have our all the tables that was configured. And let's look at the columns. Awesome. Now let's take a look at our program.cs. Here we have the configuration for our web application already set up. Let's go through one by one. At the very top, we have our connection string that is being read by the configuration under default connection. And then we have our services that adds the DB context. Let's format this so that we can read it properly. That's better. And then we have our exception folder. This is for internal use. And then here we have our default identity. So here we say we're going to use our default identity user. And then here we have our options for required confirmed account to true. What this means is basically when you sign up for an account, you'll get a confirmation email with a link to your email. Only after you click that link and you're confirmed, you'll be allowed to log in. So if you want to disable that, we can just go and set this to false. If you still want it, you can set it to true. And then the very bottom, 
we have a couple of features being added here. We have use authentication and use authorization, which is needed for identity to work. And we have map rager pa pages so that we will have support for identity. The whole concept of identity in MVC, in, especially in .NET Core 6, is implemented with Razor pages. So we absolutely need to add Razor pages for the whole thing to work. Now next step is we can start using this application. For that, let's build a solution. And let's start with the debugging. Let's go to our login page. Awesome. Now let's start by registering a user. So let's say, let's call this user1 at test.com. And for this password, we're going to say A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, register. What do we have here? We have a couple of restrictions. It says we must have at least one alphanumeric character and we must have at least one uppercase. Okay. In that case, let's use this password, A, B, C, D, exclamation, 1, 2, 3, let's copy. Paste, paste, register. Wonderful. Here we have a registration confirmation. And we have a message here saying that we need to configure a real email sender. If you want to confirm your user, click here. So this is the typical step. Whenever you sign for a user account in any web page, you usually get a confirmation link. This is the HV.NET version of it. Since we currently don't have any email sender configured, this is an intermediary page. If you want to disable this, we will see that how to do that in the next step. So here, let's click here to confirm. We have a confirm email message. Now let's go and log in with this user account. Our user account was user1 at test.com. Let's paste the password. And we have our login page. Let's go to, let's go and click on the manage at the top right here. And we have our profile with our user name. We have our email. We have our update password page. All these pages are pre-built by MVC for our convenience. Now let's go to the database and see how it looks. Let's open the ASP.NET users table. Oh, it's giving me an error. Let's uh, open this again. Okay, now we have the errors fixed. Now let's see the tables. And here we have it. We have our username, we have our password hashed, and we have a whole bunch of data. Awesome. Now let's see how we can disable our email confirmation. For that, let's go to our program. Now let's see how to disable email confirmation when you sign up. So here we have our default identity configuration. Here we're simply gonna say options.signin.requiredconfirmed account. We're gonna set this to false. Once we do that, let's rebuild the project. And let's start with our debugging. Let's go to the registration page. We're gonna sign up with this user account. And we're going to use this password. Let's sign in, sign on, register. As you can see this time, it did not take us to the confirmation page. It directly took us and automatically logged us in once we signed up. In the next series, I'll actually make a video on how to implement identity from scratch and how we can modify users, add fields, and how we can set up our own DB context, how we can do migrations. Until then, thanks for watching. Take care.